So let's review how to complete an assessment case. First, click Search Case Studies. Next, you can search for a case by using these filters, or you can enter a patient's name. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Kelly. Then we'll click Start, and then we have the option to start in Learning Mode or start in Assessment Mode. Learning Mode provides you with feedback the entire time you're completing the case. With Assessment Mode, you don't get any feedback until after you submit the case. Let's start in Learning Mode. Now we're on our getting started page and we can show our clipboard. The clipboard's going to be where all the information we collect during a case gets stored. Um, it's also going to have our referral information. Here we see that Kelly's seven years old. She's been having difficulty learning to read. She's in the second grade at a private school. Her mother is seeking additional information and is requesting a comprehensive speech and language evaluation at your private practice. Across the top of the screen, you'll see the areas that we're going to be working in, case history, collaborators, hypothesis, assessments, diagnosis, and recommendations. When we complete all of these areas, we can submit our case and we will receive an overall competency score. In order to count these for clinical clock hours, you do need to receive a 90% or greater. To the left of each of the headers are progress meters. These progress meters will fill up as we make reflective decisions or select reflective questions to ask our caregiver, client, or other collaborators. So let's start our case study, and then we'll hear from Kelly. Hi, my name is Kelly, and I'm seven years old. So we want to start with our case history. So we're going to interview Kelly's mom and begin to compile some information. Hi, I'm Kelly's mom. I'm not able to make today's evaluation, but I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So you can ask questions in any of these areas, and we'll start with identifying family information. You're going to have different types of questions here. You have ones that are reflective that earns you points. You have ones that are acceptable. They're neutral. They do not impact your score at all. And then you also have ones that are rejected. Questions are going to be rejected if they are insensitive, if they are um, redundant, if they use medical jargon that the listener can't understand, or if they are not developmentally appropriate. So a question like, how old is Kelly? What grade is Kelly in? Well, that was already in our referral information, so that's just going to be acceptable. Kelly is in the second grade. So again, not wrong, does not impact our score. Tell me about your family. Does Kelly have any siblings? That's going to be a reflective question. Kelly is an only child. Is there a family history of speech, language, learning, or reading delays? Again, a reflective question. I've always had difficulty sounding out words, and my sister is dyslexic. We can also ask mom, what are your concerns? When I do this, I will have selected three reflective questions in a row. You're going to see a green bar appear at the bottom of the screen. That's going to be positive feedback, and we want to listen closely to mom's answer. Kelly is struggling in school. Reading and math are her most difficult subjects. Kelly has difficulty learning to sound out words, and she relies on her memory, which makes it difficult for her when reading and doing math problems. She loses interest quickly when she does not understand the material. And now I would like for you to look up near case history and you can see our progress meter is filled in a little bit, um, but we're going to ask some more reflective questions. I'm going to mute mom so we can move through this quickly and watch the progress meter um, continue to fill in. In what areas does this concern seem to impact Kelly the most? Has anyone else expressed this concern? Has she ever received diagnostic or therapeutic services? Again, you see our green bar down here for our three reflective in a row, and you can see the progress meter is filling in. Let's ask a few more reflectives. Um, any complications during your pregnancy? Did she meet all her developmental milestones? Does she have a history of ear infections or hearing problems? So again, you see our progress meter gradually starting to fill up. But now we're gonna ask some rejected questions. So Kelly's mom indicates that she just got separated. Asking Kelly's mom, why did you get separated? That's gonna be an insensitive question. You're gonna see a red bar appear at the bottom of the screen. 
So that lets us know that our question has been rejected. Mom says, do we really need to get into that now? Anyone in your family have a history of speech language learning or reading delays? Has anyone in your family ever been diagnosed with a reading disorder? These two questions are basically the same. When I click on the second one, I'm gonna get the same response I got for the first one, and you're gonna see a message that says avoid selecting redundant questions. I've always had difficulty sounding out words, and my sister is dyslexic. You can see that our progress meter has started to go down. Um, if while I'm in language and literacy, I ask Kelly's mom, what is your type token ratio? Or what is Kelly's type token ratio? Here, I'm gonna lose points for using medical jargon um, with a listener that wouldn't understand it. I am not sure, I don't know what that is. And there you can see we did lose some more points. Now, if you look over in your clipboard on the right hand side, you'll see redirect one, two, and three. That lets me know that I have missed three questions so far. Now, I can continue to complete this case and still reach a 90 or above. Um, so I would continue going. And, but this just lets you monitor, you know, the number of correct or incorrect questions that you um, have selected. From here, I can move on to collaborators. So I take the information in case history and I move to collaborators and I choose um, folks to speak with that would be appropriate for this case. Now, Kelly's mom indicates that she recently saw the school psychologist. So we'll start with him and hear what he has to say. Hi, I'm the psychologist who evaluated Kelly. I sent her complete diagnostic report to your clipboard. I wasn't able to complete achievement testing. I recommend you include that in your evaluation. So he gave us two clues. Number one, he did not complete achievement testing. We need to remember to do that. Number two, he said he sent us a diagnostic report and it's in our clipboard. So let's look over in the right hand side and there we see Kelly's psychologist evaluation report in the form of a PDF. It's gonna be important for you to read those reports as many times. There will be information here that is not located anywhere else. Here we see that Kelly's um, cognitive abilities are actually in the average to high average range but we also find out that she is having some attentional issues. So ADHD was diagnosed. Now this diagnosis is not located anywhere else. Again, underscoring um, the importance of taking a look at these reports and reading them very carefully. You also have the opportunity to interview your collaborators. Sometimes they're going to have more information for you. Other times they'll just say to read the report. You are not going to talk to all of these people. For example, Kelly's mom says she never received any kind of therapeutic services before, so the PT is gonna be ruled out right there. Um, so just basically be careful with the people that you select to collaborate with, and then you can certainly ask them more questions and try to avoid the rejected ones. Next, we'll take this information from our case history and our collaborators section, and we'll create a clinical hypothesis. So here, you're going to um, answer the question, what do you think may be impacting Kelly's literacy skills? So what underlying language problems may be impacting Kelly's literacy skills and how are you going to assess her? And are there things that you need to rule out? So basically take all that information from the case history and collaborator section and create a hypothesis and also an action plan. The action plan will be um, what assessments you might administer when you get to the assessment section. So we'll save our hypothesis. And here we can see our progress meter is filled in. Now Simi case does not score this particular area. Your instructor will score that for you. From here, we will move on to assessments. And you can choose assessments from any of these areas. You do not need to assess all of these areas, only the ones that you think may be impacting um, Kelly's literacy skills or her speech skills. Now, Kelly's mom indicates that she does have some ARTIC issues. So we do want to administer an ARTIC test. So I'm gonna choose the Goldman Fristo, click administer, and then we receive our standard score and our percentile rank. If I want to have further information, I can always look in the assessment section under Arctic and Phonology. And here I see that she is indeed dentalizing the S and Z sounds. 
Remember, we needed to give achievement testing. So we'll choose the Woodcock Johnson, click administer. And these results um, happen to be quite extensive. So they are presented in the form of a PDF. And again, we would want to read through them very carefully. We can also choose um, a language evaluation to administer. So we'll administer the self five expressive language index, click administer. And there we receive our score of 108 percentile rank of 70. When we move over to language under assessments, we will get further descriptive results here. Now there is the same rule of redundancy um, in test like that are in um, case history questions. So for example, if you administer the self five expressive and then you also choose to administer the told P4 speaking composite, these two tests basically assess the same thing. I could administer one or the other, but not both. And then you would go through all of the areas choosing carefully the areas that you want to assess. Assessments should be age appropriate. You can't give too many assessments in the same area. Um, and of course, they should be pertinent to the diagnosis. We can give um, Kelly a oral perif, click administer. And now you can watch Kelly go through this. To round your lips. Now go smile. Now close your lips and puff up your cheeks. Go. And go like this. And from here, we can move on to our diagnosis section. So with diagnoses, you're gonna wanna choose, of course, the ones that would be appropriate for her. And you're also gonna wanna include diagnoses that are from other professionals. So um, the psychologist did diagnose ADHD. So I'm going to include that because it's going to impact our recommendations. So if you have an audiologist that's diagnosed your client with a hearing impairment, you're gonna wanna include that. Um, so just remember, you want to include the pertinent diagnoses from other professionals as well as your own. Um, we said that Kelly does have some RTIC issues, so we will choose speech sound disorder and choose RTIC. And then you would want to go through and choose the other diagnoses for her. Finally, you would select a recommendation summary for Kelly. We're looking at whether or not she qualifies for services, what we're going to target in therapy, any accommodations or modifications that are needed, any referrals that are necessary. So you're going to click one of these buttons after reading them all carefully and then click submit. From here, if I want to stop, I can save an exit and save my progress or I can submit my case. Once I submit my case, the case is closed and I can't go back and change any of my answers. Now I can always start over and restart the case. You can practice a case as many times as you like, but for this particular instance, once I cl click submit, it will be closed. So we'll click submit and then we'll receive our overall competency score. Competency is gonna range from emerging up to 69%, developing is 70 to 89% and mastering is 90% and above. And again, remember to count for clock hours, you want to receive a 90 or above. Finally, we would export our report. And this is gonna turn it into a PDF. And this is what you would turn in as your assignment. Now, remember when we um, selected some incorrect questions, if I wanna see what was incorrect in the report, I can scroll down and anywhere where you see the message redirect, the question above it would be the incorrect one. And that is how you complete an assessment case.